Hello, all of my YouTube friends. It is Cindy, and you are watching Sincerely Cindy Settle. So happy to have you here with me today. If you are new to my channel, welcome. I hope that you will like and decide to subscribe to this content if you enjoy book reviews, music recommendations, and TV show recommendations. So today, I have a book review for you. It feels like it's been forever since I've done a book review. It's taken me a while to get through this last book. So let's get right into it. So the last book that I read um, that was on my July TBR is called The Dreamers by Karen Thompson Walker. Um, we read this in Reading Brings Us Together. That's the um, book group that I admin with two of my other friends. So we read that as a buddy read. It was not a book that I would have picked up on my own. And that's one of the things that I love about book groups is that it takes you out of your comfort zone. So um, again, not something that I would have chosen for myself. I did end up giving it three stars. So let me tell you the premise of this book. So it really kind of hit close to home. It's called The Dreamers. These, this small community in California college students start to fall ill and they just kind of fall asleep and they don't wake up. You can't wake them up under any circumstances. Some of them also end up passing away. So they end up quarantining uh, this one level of the uh, dormitory, end up quarantining more people in the hospital, end up quarantining, quarantining the whole town and the city where people can't get in and can't get out. Um, medical staff are wearing masks and gloves and full body um, suit coverings to protect themselves. And so it really hit close to home in terms of what we've been going through here um, around the world in terms of this pandemic. So that is kind of the premise of the story and it, it, it is, it's written in third person. So it's written as if it's someone looking in on everybody and telling you what's going on with these um, different characters within this small community and how they may or may not fall ill. Um, and it's kind of like you're rooting for them not to get sick um, and you're rooting for them to come out of this um, illness and you're hoping that they're just dreaming, but you're not sure if they're dreaming. So it was a really interesting premise. Again, it's not a book that I would have chosen for myself, um, but it is something that you may enjoy. I'm sure that the blurb on the back of the book better explains what the story is about, but that's the general premise of it. So when I do these book reviews, I like to do three things that I liked and three things that I disliked about the book. So I think that helps me, it guides me along to what I wanna tell you about the, the book as I'm moving forward. So again, I gave it three stars. There were some things that I liked about it. Um, I did like the characters of me, I think it's me and Andrew. Um, you, you're introduced first to her um, in, the, in the dorm room. He is also um, a college student. They live on the same floor. Um, they become allies as the story goes on. I did enjoy their, not so much their relationship, but I enjoyed their ability to help others and to comfort others and their willingness to just jump in and help where it was needed with minimal regard for their own safety or the safety of, of um, um, their health um, or anything of that nature. So that was kind of a nice thing to see was their just willingness just to jump in there and help where they could and to do what they could um, to help those that were, that were sick. The other thing that I enjoyed was the uh, characters of Sarah and Libby. They are two sisters who, uh, are being raised by a single dad. They are in a home where the father has kind of prepared for this. The father has uh, stored up things in the basement and has masks and has uh, food and has you know canned goods and just he's, he's prepared for this type of pandemic. And he's always taught the girls that these things can happen and he was just kind of waiting for the day for these to happen. So. These two girls really look out for each other. I enjoyed learning more about their relationship um, and how they were there for one another. They had each other's backs no matter what. So I enjoyed those two characters as well. Um, and I, I did enjoy, the third thing I enjoyed was that 
the plot was different from anything that I've ever read before. Um, the writing was really good. Um, it kept me questioning as to what was real and what were dreams. So these characters all fall, well not all fall, but these people who fall ill, they fall into a dreamland and they know that they're in a dream state because of their eye movements. Some of the characters um, actually moan or talk in their sleep. Some of the characters um, uh, actually walk, sleepwalk and things of that nature. So this illness hits everybody, not everybody, but those that become ill, hits them all a little bit differently. So you, you just don't know how it's gonna affect each individual character. So I liked that it kind of kept me guessing as to what was real and what was a dream. So that was very interesting to me. So three things that I did not like. Um, I did not like, actually I have four things, so I'm, I'm just gonna throw one in there that I've already mentioned. Um, it is written in third person, not a huge fan of third person writing. It is a little bit harder to get used to if you're not used to that type of writing. So that did take a little bit of getting used to, but once I got used to it after a couple chapters, I was good to go. Another thing that I did not care was um, the shifting. There was a lot of shifting between characters within the book. Um, so you never really felt like you got to know or established a relationship, if you will, with any of the characters. So it's not like you uh, cared deeply or were concerned about a, a, a particular character getting sick and you were worried about them. You weren't really relating to those characters. So the character development, which is number three, um, the character development was weak. And I think part of that was because there were just too many, too many different characters that we were following and not enough of that character development. So we had, you know, you had me and Andrew, you had Sarah and Libby, um, you had a doctor who, um, she was a psychiatrist, so she was called in early on to see if some of this illness was psychiatric. Um, so you were learning about her, but I mean, she was kind of irrelevant to the story, to be honest. So there were, you know, there were a lot of different characters that you didn't really get to feel for any of them. And that's one of my big things when I'm reading a book. I want to feel something. I want to feel sad. I want to feel happy. I want to feel scared. I want to feel something. So this book was kind of, I didn't really feel anything. Um, the last thing that I did not care for is that it did seem to drag on a little bit. It was like, almost like the author kind of ran out of things to say or to talk about, but then at the end, tried to wrap things up really quickly. And it, I didn't feel like everything was a cohesive, we didn't have the answers that we needed to have by the end of the story. So I was a little bit disappointed that we did not have those answers. So The Dreamers by Karen Thompson Walker, it was a three star for me. Um, so if you enjoy uh, that kind of sci-fi type of story with a plot line that is somewhat similar to what we've been going through in the, in the world, then this might be a book for you. So I want to quickly um, move on to our other recommendations, TV show recommendations, which I also have not done for a little while. So TV show recommendations right now, my husband and I have finished um, Designated Survivor. We really enjoyed that, but I will say, I did not realize when we started it, the first two seasons were on cable. The last season, the third season, Netflix picked up. So when you transition from season one to season two to season three, you go from having like 22 episodes in those first two seasons to having 10 in the third season. And in those 10 episodes, you do lose some characters and the language gets a little bit, um, obviously not as cable friendly. So you do have some language um, and some of the writing is a little bit different. Not that it wasn't good, it was just, it was a it was a switch that we need that we had to make. So, and I will say also that there are some cliffhangers at the end of season three. I mean, not major cliffhangers, but things that they could build on if they choose to go on to season four. My husband and I didn't really feel disappointed in how season three ended, but we would like to see more, which I think is doubtful based on what I've read. So anyway, if you enjoy political uh, dramas, you enjoy Kiefer Sutherland, definitely check that out. 
I have finished um, my own series of Working Moms. So that was a quick, um, easy season. I think it's like 10 episodes. And I've also been watching Shameless. It has quite a few seasons and I believe it's on TNT. I watch it very sporadically. I watch it when I'm walking on the treadmill and I don't walk on the treadmill quite as often as maybe I should. So, but anyway, it's a good show as well. Um, so those are the TV show recommendations at this point. My husband and I aunt are going to move forward with um, The Blacklist with James Spader. So I love James Spader. We watched, this is another show that we watched early on when it was on uh, cable. It's now on Netflix. We're enjoying not having those commercials in there. We're running through that um, as, you know, we're, we're into like episode five or something like that of season one. So we're enjoying that as well. Um, let's see. Oh, movies. We also watched We Are Marshall with Matthew McConaughey and Matthew Fox. We are from West Virginia. Marshall University is in Huntington, West Virginia, which is about 45 miles down the road. Um, very good story um, about the plane crash um, in 1971, I believe it was, and the rebuilding of that Marshall program. It's one of those movies that's just a, a good sports movie that makes you feel good. Um, so definitely check that one out. Music recommendations, and then we'll be out of here. So music recommendations today, Fishing in the Dark by the Nitty Gritty Dirt Band, Our House by Madness, and These Dreams by Heart. You can definitely tell I'm an 80s girl for sure. So that is all I have for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like, feel free to subscribe. Um, I would love for you to get notifications for when I post my next video. And let me know what you're reading down in the comments. Let me know what you're watching. What books do you recommend? What movies do you recommend? What TV shows are you recommending right now? I would love, love, love to hear from you. I am Cindy Settle and I am signing out. Mwah.